<laughs> I'm overthinking it. I need a little whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> I was diagnosed with breast cancer and I had a reoccurrence of breast cancer again in January 2019. I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer, triple negative breast cancer, uh, grade 3, stage 3, acute lymphoblastic leukemia, Hodgkin's lymphoma, ductal carcinoma in situ, triple negative breast cancer, stage 3, grade 3, breast cancer, myeloma, breast cancer, then 2000. 18 through 19 with thyroid, acute myeloid leukemia, breast cancer in 2019 and then they found out in 2020 that it spread. I was initially diagnosed on my 14th birthday with um, an osteoblastoma in my spine and then four years ago I was affected by the long-term effects of the radiation that I had which then resulted in me having radiation induced lung cancer in January last year. Uh, I was diagnosed when I was 18 uh, at the start of 2016 with alveolar soft part sarcoma which is a rare, very rare type of cancer and I'm still living with it now. It's incurable. I went through all the therapies, chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy, chemotherapy six rounds. I had 20 weeks of chemotherapy and then after the chemotherapy I also had a double mastectomy in 2018 and then a few months later I started radiotherapy. I had three rounds of chemotherapy, radiotherapy and a stem cell transplant. I had wide excision surgery to remove two areas from the left breast followed by radical radiotherapy for six weeks. Two surgeries on my left shoulder, microwave ablation on my right lung and I'm currently taking um, a drug called sidirinib, which is like an oral chemotherapy drug, which is treating some tumours in my lungs. And it's going well so far. <laughs> I have a myeloma. I have a lot of uh, chemotherapy, and I have, um, I have done the transplant. So I have done the operation to remove my whole breast. Yes, and then I set up the charity to support cancer patients. After the operation, I had to take the homotherapy for at least five years. However, the homotherapy gave me a lot of side effects. I lost all of my body hair. Um, I lost all of my brows, all of my lashes, all of my hair. I just became this alien looking person that I can't even describe it, but I didn't feel like a woman anymore. It was difficult losing it because you don't really have anything to hide behind. Um, and I remember get, getting called Baldy and Aldi by these two really rude teenage boys and I lost a lot of confidence, but I started wearing more bold makeup and turbans. It was hard. I don't, I don't think there's anything anyone can say to prepare you for what it's like to lose your hair. If you're going out on a night out, you'll blow dry your hair and you'll get ready and your hair is like, the end piece. So not having your hair, I felt for me vulnerable, bare, ugly, invisible, unattractive. <laughs> um, it was hard. It was really, really hard. My hair started falling out um, within the first couple of weeks. At first it was just a little bit, uh, then it got more and more and more until I had to shave it off. I had long curly hair which was past my shoulders. When it was straight it was halfway down my back. I felt like it was part of my identity, a strong part of my identity. I'd been growing it for probably about 10 years. I knew that I'd have to cut it off. I knew that I'd have to shave it off at some point. I knew that it was gonna fall out. The doctors were really clear about that. But the reality of it was quite um, daunting. I had been growing my hair for my wedding, so it was really long. I had always been known for my really long hair and my eyelashes. So when both of those went, I completely lost my confidence and I found it really hard to look at myself in the mirror for a very long time. The day that I actually shaved my head completely bald 
was a happy day for me. I thought it would be a really emotional and tearful day, but actually, I just felt f so much more free um, having all my hair gone, and it was just one less thing to worry about. Losing my eyebrows and my eyelashes upset me actually more than losing my hair. And I think it's because they give expression, they frame your face. I cold capped throughout my treatment, so I kept quite a lot of my hair, but I could feel when it was coming out. It was really itchy, it was really sore. My nose hair fell out. I had snot falling out of my face. I, my nose was sore from wiping all the time. Obviously, I had it during the summer, so hay fever was hell and out. And your nails. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damage nails. You lose your nails. Yeah. yeah. I had really long hair when I was diagnosed, and I, I made the choice to donate it. And then I shaved it, and it was the best feeling ever. That every woman should shave their head, that's just my, my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> my mum, as much as I love her, was very much like, Oh my god, your hair! Oh my god, your hair! And I just kept getting that from my mum throughout the whole thing. Because with um, South Asian people, they generally associate beauty with long hair. So if you have short hair, I've had really short hair before, and everyone's like, Oh my god, I remember my granddad saying once, Why have you cut your hair off? Your hair was beautiful. Why have you cut me like a boy? Um, so to not have that control over it was really hard. In the Asian culture, beauty is massive. Hair, beauty, um, you know, the thought of losing my hair was uh, massive. And my mum had, the year before my diagnosis, gone through her own treatment and lost all of her hair. So I'd seen her lose all of it. And I think um, when you're constantly getting complimented on, oh my God, your hair's so beautiful, your hair's so beautiful, the first thing that sort of came to my mind was to ask, am I going to have chemo and am I going to lose my hair? I still have those concerns. I still worry if it comes back, am I going to have to have chemo, am I going to lose my hair? Will I be able to get my own hair made into a wig? Um, it's a constant worry. Especially being a Sikh woman, um, your hair is a big part of like who you are. It defines like your strength. Um, so losing my hair was really difficult. Yeah, I relied on beanie hats a lot. <laughs> I didn't think hair loss would have affected me because I didn't lose my hair, but actually even having it thinning and losing it in clumps really did affect me. It, it hit my self-confidence definitely and I think having the wigs meant that I just brought my confidence back because I really didn't feel like myself with my hair. I actually just did not understand anything about cancer and I was like, oh, I thought hair loss was like a symptom of cancer. Like, I, just, I don't know, you just cancer equals hair loss. Um, and I was told that chemotherapy, traditional chemotherapy doesn't work on my type of cancer. So at first I was like, well that's great, so I have to lose my hair. Uh, definitely had people say, well at least you don't have to lose your hair. Once it had spread to my lungs and they told me it was incurable, it became a matter of, well that's a bad thing because there are fewer treatments for me and I was being told that there weren't many drugs to treat my type of cancer. So lots of like mixed emotions there. I didn't receive any support initially. Um, I probably received very basic leaflet information, but I felt like not seeing someone like me, my age, my, I suppose, zest for life on le leaflets, I just couldn't relate to any of it. And so because I didn't see that, I didn't utilize, I suppose, that little support that was out there. It's a difficult one. I think I had to find help myself. Only very recently I found out about Wigs for Heroes and just the amazing work that Kaz does. And yeah, I, I, I had to ask for mental health therapy to deal with other stuff, so yeah. I only knew to ask about um, the wig grant the NHS gives because a friend of mine's mum had just been through treatment. My nurses didn't actually suggest it. And then when I did ask, I was given the voucher and pointed in the direction of um, a wig shop in town. I was able to get a free wig from them. Um, when I went, there weren't that many choices. I got the wig just so, just in case I needed it. I didn't feel confident putting it on. I, I never felt confident wearing it though. Um, it was like a, it was like a bob, <laughs> and I was used to all this curly hair, and it looked lovely, but it didn't feel like me. I've still got the wig in the box, in the carrier bag, never touched and never worn. In hospital, I was actually not offered much support around losing my hair and hair loss. Most of the consultants and nurses offered support in terms of treatment and um, 
physiotherapy, but not much advice on hair loss. Um, my husband actually cut my hair for the first time in hospital just with a pair of scissors um, because we weren't offered any services like that in hospital. The support around, you know, the mental side of things could have been a lot better and I wish it had been because I think sometimes people think if you don't have chemo that you don't you're not affected by it and there are times where I sort of sat there and felt well I didn't have I didn't have cancer because I didn't have chemo and so I can't say I had cancer and I feel bad about almost saying that I did because there's other people who have it so much worse than me. Haven't been offered that much support um, and because sarcoma is so rare there aren't many people around with it so it was quite difficult to find people that were like in my age group um, so yeah there wasn't that much support on offer for me. In 1989 mental health didn't exist. Children with cancer tended to die so it was thought that I possibly may survive but if I did it would be a case of pretending it never happened to getting on with my life which as it turns out caused me some real big mental health issues over the years. I felt like I couldn't be me anymore. I didn't know who me was. And I suppose it was going on a journey of self-discovery and finding the inner me and being able to express it on the outside. That was actually a fun part. I had a blonde wig, I had a short wig, I had a curly wig, I had a pink wig. And because I was trying different styles, I'd feel a bit sassy. And it kind of took me away from what was actually happening to me during chemo. I found a sen new sense of confidence that I probably wouldn't have been brave enough to, to embrace before. I think cancer, although stripped me away of a lot of things, gave me probably a different set of things that I needed in my life. There are really more colours than what the rainbow tells us <laughs> um, and I'm clearly going through all of them right now. Try lots of different hairstyles so it's kind of like I don't know 80s kind of <laughs> that's what it reminds me of 80s um, uh, George Michael and Wham I think I, th I think some you know I was kind of liking it too. <laughs> I feel like I've gotten over the shock of the hair coming out and now that I finished chemo I feel a bit more like me a newer version of me we're in a society that wants us to shave our armpits, to shave our legs, to have the perfect eyebrows. And all of a sudden, I don't have that urge anymore. I do not have it. Let it grow, let it be, because all the drugs made it fall out. And now finally my body is revitalizing itself and it's making itself better again. So I could just leave it be a little bit more. I don't have to stick to these, you must be hairless. Why must I be hairless? No, I don't want to be. I have quite big surgery scars on my shoulder as quite a young person who's just entering like adulthood I was very self-conscious and thought that nobody was going to like me and that everyone's going to be staring at my scars um, it's not the case and actually I'm way more empowered by my scars now and I'm actually way more confident now five and a half years down the line um, and I love getting my scars out. It's way stronger than I ever thought I was. Yeah definitely I think that's very true people are much stronger than they mm. think there are so many things that do not matter in this life that yes. you just focus on the things that are important to you and make you happy. Yeah. Faith is very important for us. Positive thinking and also long-term hope, short-term goal and long-term goal. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I believe so. <laughs> It has really been about reconnecting with what's important in life, um, not taking things for granted and enjoying all of the things around me whenever I can. I wish someone had said to me, take your time. Doctors are saying you will lose your hair and you will lose your eyebrows and you will lose this. And actually I didn't lose all of my hair. So I didn't need to go bam, bam, bam. I wish I knew just how much it would affect me. I wasn't prepared for that at all. Nobody told me about how I would feel in myself. I just assumed the images that certain probably organizations throw and use um, about what a cancer patient is supposed to look like. I suppose they don't really talk about the feelings and the sense of, yes, you might feel lost one day, but you'll feel found another day. I wish I went to some more support groups that discussed hair loss and how it makes you feel and that it's okay to feel a certain way about it even though other people tell you it's just hair. 
I wish that someone said to me, I understand that it's not just hair. That's what I didn't have. And I wish I had that. I wish that I knew how painful it was to actually, like physically painful it was to lose hair. You watch it on TV and people are in the shower and they put their hands and it comes out and they don't really look like they're in any pain. They're just like, oh, my hair's falling out. When I knew that my hair was gonna fall out, I tried to do a lot of reading about what it was gonna be like. What does your hair feel like when it falls out? And there wasn't anything specific that said my head is gonna feel like it's on fire, that I'm barely gonna be able to touch my scalp. Um, and I wish that I did know that. I wish I could have prepared myself a bit more for it. People would say it's like, maybe like little ants nibbling on your skin. Who knows what an ant nibbling on your skin feels like? I don't think you're told about the different kinds of breast cancer, to be totally honest with you. Even when the first mam mammograms came back, um, there was no real information about that given, and I think that would have been really helpful to help me not worry so much about what was ahead. I had a lot of people telling me, don't let it change you, stay, just stay the same old Maddie, and I was like, I had this big pressure to like not to be the same person I was before cancer and, but I've realised now that it's okay that it's a big part of my life and that's okay and it doesn't matter if people don't like that then that's they're up to them. We have to try and enjoy the journey. We focus so much on treatment and getting to the end of treatment that we often forget about living in that six month period, that year, that year and a half, two years, however long the treatment's going to be. Find something that you love to do that you know it's going to help you get through it. You know that's going to that you can control. Be kind to yourself. Seek out charities, support. The biggest thing is reach out, find those people, find your tribe. Talk, 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 talk to everyone. Make friends with girls and boys going on the same journey as you. Sometimes you're going to feel really alone. There's people out there. We get it, and and. Just talking to somebody who's been there can make a world of difference, definitely. And it's so assuring to know that other people are feeling the way that you are. It just um, validates what you're feeling, and I think that in itself has really helped. Embrace these times and embrace the different looks. Go for a different crazy hair colour and just try a hairstyle that you've never tried before because once your hair grows back, which it will, you will miss the old you and you would miss the times when you had short hair. Ask for support, take the support, reach out to charities like Wigs for Heroes and um, you'll find some great people and great communities out there that can really help you. Definitely try and find some type of counselling. Get support for your mental health. I really struggled with mine throughout my treatment. Don't be too proud to ask for help, but that people will be willing to help you. Take each day, hour by hour sometimes. Asking for help is really important and not necessarily right at the beginning is when you come to the end of your active treatment of your chemo and radiotherapy when the appointments don't happen as often. That is when you probably need your support groups more. Make notes, write things down, use your um, health professionals and your colleagues, friends and ask the questions. Knowledge help us to face the future. Let's make informative choice. That means we can choose what is good for us, for ourselves. Don't ever give up. As hard as it gets, as sick as you feel, as tired as you get, don't give up. Even on the days when you don't feel brave, because there'll be a lot, you are being brave, you're, you're getting through it and you will get through it. But you have to, have to, have to be compassionate to yourself. There's no like, I finished chemo, Bam, you're straight back to yourself. Um, it's okay to cry and it's okay to be upset and it's okay to be scared. But it's also okay to really take control of it and if taking control looks like shaving your hair off, do it. If taking control means that you plait your hair and you braid it away until the time comes where you can't braid it anymore, do it. Do the things that are going to make you feel good during this time and allow yourself to be scared and don't let anybody tell you that it's just hair and it will just grow back because you know that already you know that it's just it's going to grow back and it's just hair but allow yourself to be scared and allow yourself to feel exactly how you want to feel without anybody taking that away from you yeah don't pressure yourself to feel great and be positive every day because you won't and that's okay please don't feel like you are alone you are not there are so many people out there ready to lift you up ready to give you their advice, their knowledge, their encouragement. 
please don't be alone, whether it's you know via social media, in your hospital, or speaking to your family and friends. Um, yeah, just take each day as it comes. Um, so I think make a memory a day. Um, yeah, make a good memory a day. Yeah. It erases the bad days. <laughs> as cheesy as that sounds, but it really does.